You know, they always made you aware that um, you can't stay here forever, you know. So while you're here, you know, you start applying for this, that, and the other. I went back to school. I got a degree in carpentry. I got a degree in plumbing from Dunwoody, you know. And, man, it was just cool. <laughs> so you have to know where I come from to know why I don't want to go out there. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been out there, you know, and I didn't do myself any good. You know, I hurt myself. I got high. You know, I did a lot of things out there. Here, in people serving people, you can't do that. And that's the life I wanted where I didn't hurt myself. You know, I did good things for myself. I had a job. I'm self-supporting. I took care of my kids. They went to school. I interacted in a computer. I mean, everybody should want that for their life, but it doesn't happen like that when you make bad judgments. And I made bad judgments. And I started making good ones till I got here. I'm out there now. I haven't made any bad judgments, but it's still scary. You know, I'm making it. I'm making it because of this place. So, I'll be all right. I already know I'll be all right. Man, if it wasn't for people, certain people, man, if it wasn't for this place, I just don't know. I couldn't see, I couldn't see me doing it by myself. My name is Tamika Lawler. Um, I was born in Chicago, Illinois, moved to Minnesota in 2002 with my mom and my younger sister. Our living situation wasn't the best. You know, my mom had to deal with a lot of abuse and after my grandmother passed away, she got help at the funeral and just picked us up from school, from school one day and was just like, hey, we're gonna go to Minnesota. As a 10 year old, like it was very nerve wracking because it was an entire new place. I didn't know anything. All I know is I had my mom and my sister, but as long as I had them, like I just knew she would never put us in a bad position. So I felt in my heart that everything would be okay and it was okay. We lived in the shelter for about a year and then my mom was approved to live in transitional housing. When we lived in the shelter, it was just me, my mom and my younger sister. Once we got approved for the transitional housing, then my mom was able to send for my older brother. And <laughs> we were so happy. We've never lived apart from him before. So to live apart from him for a whole year and then to have him come here, it was so amazing. And I don't know, I love you. I came to Minnesota when I was 16. Uh, Tamika has a lot more fond memories about her transition up to Minnesota than I. I was a little bit older, so I had had more time to uh, form those secure relationships with folks in Chicago, and I, had, you know, it had become a part of me. So when I came up to Minnesota, it was reluctant to be. I was, I was your quintessential 16-year-old. It didn't matter what this place had to offer; I was going to hate it, <laughs> um, uh, just because it forced me to move. Um, but when I gave it a shot, when I actually, you know, started to participate in some of the programming and I got to know the staff here and started meeting friends and realizing all the benefits, all the, the, the positive things this place offered to me, uh, it quickly turned into home. The building was huge, was probably one of the biggest buildings that I have ever seen before. There was a lot of people, so that made me very nervous. But everyone was so friendly. I just remember a lot of smiling faces and a lot of people telling us, it's gonna be okay. And Jocelyn was actually one of those people that was just like, you know, it's gonna be okay. I know this is different. You're gonna make friends here. There's lots of stuff for here for you to do. And it was just really comforting because we had a, a lot of help help that we didn't have in Chicago. I credit people serving people with a lot of the success that um, my family has found today uh, because they gave us a lot of the foundational skills that we would have needed. Um, at the very least, they provided us with stable home, uh, stable housing, food, um, you know, clothing, the, the very basic essentials that you might need to function in day-to-day -day life. Um, but it was so much more than just that. Um, they gave us those, those intangibles that you need to you know, really be successful once you take off from this place. We definitely always had a lot of stuff to do. They let me volunteer at the, um, the front desk. We had the activities on the second floor. I was a little bit older, so I got to volunteer in like the preschool room. They let me volunteer in the cafeteria, which is, I've always wanted to be a cook. 
And it was nice to be like a 10 year old, 11 year old getting respect from adults. That, that really doesn't happen very much and the fact that they respected me so much, they actually used ideas that I had. It was really nice to know that my opinion was valued and respected. So this place definitely had a lot to do with how I grew up and the morals that I have, so. When I think about what People Serving People did for my mom, Yep, they provided a lot of tangible supports for her, but it was the intangible things that really stood out to me. So for as long as I could remember, my mom never had a steady job. She came here to Minnesota, and through people serving people, she got a job um, working at the what was then Metrodome, um, and she stayed there for a few years. And she went to school, Summit OIC, and she began to take carpentry classes. Um, she began to take ownership uh, of her, her lived experience and she began to get the most out of it. And I don't think that would have happened if she, was, if she hadn't come here. Had she stayed in Chicago or ended up someplace else, I just don't know if the supports would have been there to help her do the things that she did. Um, she also seeked treatment, so she um, went on to um, receive a lot of treatment for her addiction and she got a whole lot better. And I think a lot of that happened, it stemmed from her experience here at People Serving People. I was writing my college essay um, to get into college, and uh, it, it was an essay about uh, the uh, most influential people and experiences in our lives. And I remember talking to my mom and I told her, even though I didn't like it in the moment, the best thing that you have ever done for this family, ever, is bringing us here. So Tamika ended up going to North Dakota State College of Science, um, and. Uh, she ended up going to school for culinary arts, and so she ended up doing the thing that she has been doing forever, which is cooking um, and you know catering to people's needs uh, through food, which is incredibly important. Um, and myself, uh, I ended up going to the University of St. Thomas. It's in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, graduated there with my undergraduate degree in social work. Went on to begin working there in the admissions office. Um, I'm currently working on my master's in social work. And so it's, it's so circular um, that I'm doing the work that I'm doing. Both of us, we're in positions where we serve others. Um, and it was because we had the guidance, the assistance, the supports that we got here. And we wanted to go on to perpetuate that, to, to share that um, with others moving forward. My younger sister actually moved to Mississippi and she came home to visit. And me, my brother and my sister decided to have sibling day. And we ended up at People Serving People. And for pulling in the parking lot, so many memories just rushed back. You know, just playing outside, waiting outside for the school bus, and walking through the front doors was just like coming back home after college. It's, I don't know, my heart just felt so full and it made me realize how far we've actually come because we recalled a success story a couple times during the day. And, it made me feel, you know, like no matter where you come from, like it can always get better. And just coming back here, it just made us see how far we've come, how truly blessed we are. And I'm gonna always come back and visit. This will always be like my original home in Minnesota. It's the small things. It's the small pieces of giving back. It's, you know, volunteering some of your time. If you can give financially, that's fantastic. But everything that you do to give back to this program, to give to this program, is going to directly impact somebody. I can tell you firsthand that the people who live in this program, who live through this program, um, without the, the, the funding, without the support, without the volunteerism, um, a lot of the things that we benefited from probably wouldn't have been possible. Um, and those experiences, again, went to shape who we are today. And so, I don't think that you know we would say we're like perfect or model or ideal or anything like that, but um, we're something. And I think what we we became that something due in, in large part to what people serving people had to offer.